the really important thing to know, because if you're out into the stars, I remember last year, just before I had to take this trip to Australia, and I was laying on the beach, and I was uh, with a friend, and it was beautiful. You could see the whole Milky Way galaxy on the outer, it was on the outer banks. Um, and I was out there, and we were talking about this stuff. And there's someone who had never seen one of these objects. And suddenly, in the Milky Way, an object about that big at arm's length, which is huge, it was pretty close and pretty big, materialized, and it was this beautiful kind of crimson, ruby red, but it was, live, it was like it was living. It was like this thing that was living, and it moved and went the whole distance of the Milky Way galaxy. It wasn't an instantaneous thing. It was there for a little while. I don't know if anyone else on Earth saw it, but we saw it. We were looking straight up. And it was like it was alive. The sky was alive. The object was alive. And I realized it was going right in the direction of Australia, which a few days later, I was wheels up to Australia. So, um, and I, I think it was, I told my wife, I said, I think they were telling me, you know, bon voyage and we'll be with you there. So, so it, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience. And it can happen that easily and that quickly, you know, if you open up to it. Um, and ultimately, the, the central science of all of this, yes, there's materials, there's electronics, there's communication modalities, but the central technology and understanding is understanding yourself, your thoughts, your mind, the meditative state, and how that can be used to make contact. And in deep meditation, you can un, pretty much unfurl, unravel any mystery you wish to. In the Vedic tradition, there's something called Ritambara Pragya, Ritam. And it's a level of consciousness where it's very, very deep. It's just sort of like this side of unbounded samadhi state, where Ritam is located, where if you put your awareness, you can ask and kind of intend to know anything. Now, of course, I guess the, the supreme being knows all things at all times, but an individual can know this, ob this thing, that thing, this object, you know, one at a time, or maybe if you're really brilliant, a hundred things at a time, or a million, but not everything. Um, but I think that's the wellspring of intu intuition, and that resides within every single person. So it's like this uh, conscious quantum hologram where all of us are part of this conscious hologram, and every single one of us even though unique, at the deep level of consciousness, we're plugged into that unbounded. And if we travel to that, that's where we become one. And if we begin to experience that deeply enough, we can begin to experience that even while we're walking around, driving down the road. In my experience in the ER, I, I mean, I used to have a lot of experiences where it would just be this intuitive flash and I would know someone had a brain tumor or I would know someone had something completely hidden with no symptomatology. And I would act on it. And the nurses call me a warlock, um, but <laughs> they were awesome. In North Carolina, I said, well, these hillbilly nurses were great, but they, <laughs> but they would say, Dr. Greer's a warlock. And, um, <laughs> and so we would have these experiences. Uh, at one time, a man came in, and I, this is why I encourage people to do this. I don't care if you're an airline pilot, a uh, software engineer, a business executive, a uh, bus driver, a doctor, whatever you are, if you learn these principles of consciousness and the cities that go with it, these abilities, it will be very valuable in your life. And um, there was this man that came in and he was a 26 year old guy with a couple kids and he had the flu, it seemed like the flu, it's flu season. And then I looked at him and um, I looked and I thought, God, he's got a big brain tumor. And he didn't have any symptoms of a neurological insult at all. And I turned to the nurse and um, she was fat, bubbles, love bubbles. She walked like this and had a bouffant. Um, and I turned to bubbles, I said, I need a stat cat scan of the brain. And she said, well, doctor, she's only got the flu. <laughs> I said, just do it. It was always in my mantra, just do it. Thank God I didn't have to go through a bureaucracy, insurance company, or a government. I just, they did just do it. So he did it, 
and the radiologist calls back an emergency call back. And radiologists usually don't, you know, they don't bother. Well, this guy's got a astrocytoma that's like a pancake over his brain and it's herniating his brain stem. Well, the, the brain stem going down through the frame and magnum gave him the fever, the chills, the no all his symptoms. But there were no focal neurological symptoms. And so he went to emergency neurosurgery. He lived. Uh, I just see him periodically. He'd come in occasionally. And, but, it, but it was totally, I'd say, almost anyone who would have, in fact, the neurosurgeon said, how did you even think to get a CAT scan? Because it just seemed like he had the flu. I said, well, I just had a hunch. I couldn't say to him that I actually remote viewed and sensed that there was this thing. But it's like, you know, how golden retrievers have been trained to find mel melanomas and stuff. It's like humans, we have this ability whether you're a scientist or a doctor or a pilot or whatever you are, and we, we've shut ourselves off from our birthright of being conscious, enlightened beings. And I'll, I'll, it's so easy to get back to that. You sit quietly, do nothing, do a meditative process, and confirm that you can do these things. And it will, it'll just unfold. And it's not like every single day is like that, but it happens enough that you know, life becomes wonderful, magical. And I would really encourage people to do that. And when you're doing this contact work with ETs, it means that you can do this under the stars with three or four or five people that you're close to. Remember what Dr. John found at Princeton. If someone is in a state of, of unified awareness and are bonded and they are intending with thought, it has an exponentially greater effect than one person by themselves. And so that's the power of a group of people doing this, so long as they're harmonious and not fighting like a bunch of wildcats. Um, uh, and there's coherence in the group. So if you can create coherence in a group, it's incredibly powerful, because it's orders of magnitude. It's an exponential increase in the power of the thought, the consciousness, and the effect to make contact. And uh, somehow, some way, these civilizations will respond, if you let them.